treading into some dangerous territory now. Do cables matter? A lot of cables in your system. You got power cables, you got digital interconnects, you've got uh, analog interconnects, you've got speaker cables or headphone cables. A lot of cables in your system. People get pretty wild about this stuff. Love debating it online. I think the only thing you can do, if you're curious, is go out and listen to stuff. And that's what I did. And I'm going to give you some feedback on what I found. And I'm really talking about interconnects today. Just that special handoff between your source, whether it be a turntable or a DAC, and your amplifier. Um, that's a nice critical juncture, right? You've made the signal, you've gotten it all ready to go, now you're handing it over to the guys to push it and drive your headphones or your speakers. Don't want to lose any fidelity. And I guess the question on my mind was, you know, if you go from the cable that comes in the box with your DAC, or, um, you know, an Amazon cable like this, Cables Direct, uh, $9 cable up to say 30 to $50 range, you know, three to five X the price of a standard cable, are you going to get an appreciable difference? Um, I looked at a handful of cables uh, from three sources uh, primarily that get talked about a lot, um, are pretty commonly discussed. Uh, so I will outline them real quick. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, Mogami. Mogami. Japanese cable manufacturer, they make a ton of different um, versions of their cable um, that all have slightly different properties. Uh, I looked at a handful, I looked at the 2534, the 2552, the 2549. Um, with all these I tested stuff that was both single-ended and um, balanced 3-pin XLR pairs. Um, next brand up, so this is, yeah, so uh, Mogami cable but um, in this case, assembled by World's Best Cable. You can get that stuff through Amazon. They have almost every configuration kind of ready to go where you can pick like, oh, I want, you know, this kind of connector and I want this length. Um, so very handy, usually in the 30-ish, 30 to $40 region for most combinations. Although if you get the really fancy like locking connectors and stuff, you can go up from there. Um, Belden, another famous, uh, in this case, American cable manufacturer. Um, oh, we're just going to be doing this focus thing all day. Um, these ones assembled by Blue Jean Cables. Um, I, I got two different cables from them because they don't make the exact same cable for um, XLR and single-ended. Um, the nice thing about them is, you know, everything's sort of customs. You go and you pick your saw, your length. Um, in some cases, you can choose, like, the color of the cable and whatnot. Sometimes they give you a couple options for... A type of analog signal, uh, you know, a type of analog cable or digital cable, and sort of are very clear with you about what they like and don't like about them, which is great because they don't make the cable, so they don't really care. Their assemblers, you know, that's kind of where most of their margin comes from. Um, anyway, this is their LC1 S LC1, which is made for them by Belden, but it's exclusive to Blue Jeans Cable and their little proprietary tweak. Um, if you go to the balanced end, you're going to end up with, um, well, you got some choices, but this is the 1800F, um, also made by Belden. It's a, it's a strange feeling cable. It's an odd feeling cable. It's kind of, it's not tacky, but it's very textural. Um, and the, the standard um, Neurotech connectors here are just A-OK. -okay. Um, so yeah, and then the last uh, last brand that we're looking at uh, is, is sort of the odd odd man out uh, in terms of volume of production and whatnot. This is uh, Maro Audio. Um, they are also commonly discussed both positively and negatively in the audiophile community. Um, they use a proprietary SSI technology, they call it, which is OFC copper strands that are insulated from each other. Uh, and as you go up their line, you get more of these strands. So this is the MA1, which is like the beginner one, and that's eight strands. And then it goes up to, I think, hundreds of strands for hundreds and thousands of dollars. Um, these are actually priced at, I think, 80-ish bucks for this length, which would make them out of our price range, but they are always on sale <laughs> for about 40% off, um, which is one of the things that drives people crazy about them. Um, and so then they come in about 45 bucks. Uh, if I didn't mention um, the the um, Belden's assembled by Blue Jean Cable are about 45 for single-ended set and 55 for a balance set. So those are the three uh, flavors that I looked at, all sort of in that, you know, low 30s to mid 50s kind of price range, three to five X of our 
comparison cable. And right off the bat, I will tell you that all of these in my mind sounded noticeably better than the $10 counterpart. Now, do they sound wildly better, hugely better? Is there a giant gap between these? Absolutely not. <laughs> How did I test? Well, I, did, I don't use measuring equipment. I just use my ears, so you're getting a totally biased personal opinion on this. I, however, did not have any skin in the game with any of these. Um, some of them I already had. Some of them I bought for this experiment. So I, don't, I didn't have a winner in mind. I'm not affiliated with anyone. I don't care. Uh, I was just seeking for me what I, what I preferred. I was listening with the Stax... Um, SR or SRX 9000, which is just a detailed monster. I'll have a review of this guy soon, um, but very resolving. It will tell you everything that is happening, everything, uh, good or bad. Um, and that was paired with um, an LTA Z10E, which is also incredibly detailed and resolving. And that was paired with a Mojo Mystique X Stack, which is also very detailed and very resolving. So that's the chain. Um, I also did listen on some other DACs and other amps and other headphone combos just to kind of like double check when I make sure that there wasn't some synergy thing that was really driving my opinion of something. Um, so like I said, the results are that everything is better than the $10 cable, but not by a huge margin. And I'll tell you just right now between these three, how I rank them. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about what I heard and why I gave them those rankings. So, um, at the bottom of the pile for me, and not, like not by a huge margin, there's not a huge margin, huge margin of difference between these cables and the ten dollar, and there's not a huge margin of difference between them. Um, but the Mogami stuff um, came in at the bottom for me, um, followed by the um, uh, Morrow stuff, kind of in the middle, and then the um, Belden stuff um, uh, up at the top. Uh, is that, right, is that a good, is that, is that helpful? Is this helpful to see them like this? No. Um, anyway, um, so let's talk a little bit about that. Why Why did I end up with that ranking? Um, the, the Mogami stuff is, is great. As I mentioned, there's a ton of different variants of it. I didn't try them all. I tried three-ish, three? Yeah, three or four probably between the sets. Uh, different variants. I liked the 2549 the best out of everything I heard. Um, the, the general characteristic for me of the Mogami stuff um, as compared to the other two uh, in this test is that it is a bit smoother, like a touch rolled off, a little less energetic. It's, it's, it's a fullish, fullish sound. It's a thickish sound, um, but it doesn't reach super deep into the bass or super high in to the trebles. So it's a very enjoyable listen. And, you know, if you have a system that's maybe a little sharp at times, a little, um, <laughs> just a little, you know, a little crackly, a little crisp, and, and that's not to your taste. You know, maybe, I, I don't think like tuning with cables is going to be a, the cheapest and best way to go, but, um, or the, the most effective way to go, I should say. But if you're just looking for that right synergy, um, the Mogami stuff is also the most affordable, so that's, that's nice as well. The cable feels great, it's easy to live with the variation in connectors and stuff is awesome. But yeah, for me, it was just a touch rolled off, a little smoother, a little less energetic, a little bit sort of mellower would be an overstatement, but just a kind of a mellower sound. Um, uh, yeah, and I think just less like little detailed texture. Um, the detailed texture champ might be uh, the Morrow cables. Um, they are uh, very, they're very crisp. They're very clean. Um, they're very dry, I think is the right word to say, which has both positive and negative effects. Um, the positive effects of, of, a, of a dry or crisper cable is that all the like leading detail edges of the upper, you know, treble region are really crisp and really present. Um, and also with having a slightly thinner sound, you end up generating a bit more sort of perceived bass between elements, like instruments come a bit apart. There sort of seems to be a bit more space. Um, <clears throat> these these have a bit, you know, more energy uh, than the uh, Mogami stuff, for sure, but not as much as the Belden, um, which sort of leads me to the Belden. So the Belden stuff... I know. So all oh, these cables look the same. The Belden stuff is kind of interesting since, you know, Belden doesn't offer the same, same um, exact solution for balanced and um, single ended that might 
Sway, you're thinking a little. I really do not like the feel of this cable. But you don't touch your cables that much. Plug them in. Leave them alone. Unless you're doing what I did, which is like switch them 1,000 times over a couple of weeks. Um, but in typical lifestyle, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're just not, they're not bling, you know, they're not, they don't feel super special, but they sound very special in my mind. Um, especially the, the, well, actually they both sounded really great and compared really well to their counterparts. You, you kind of get a little bit of the best of both worlds, I think, with the Belden between the Morrow and the, um, and the Megami, where the Megami gave you that, that fullness and that smoothness, um, and the Morrow gave you that detail and that crispness. Um, the, the Belden stuff, it gives you both. It gives you detailed texture, um, but it gives you this, this energy and this um, dynamic quality that's really compelling. I think the word that just kept coming to mind every time I plugged this in was, oh, this sounds so alive, it's so alive, it's so alive. Uh, <clears throat> you know, singers' voices would just seem to have more energy radiating from within them. You know, big dynamic swings in music from very quiet parts to very loud and dramatic parts it felt so big, felt so huge. Um, the sound just felt big and expansive. Um, and you know, it had what I like, which is a decent amount of like mid bass and fullness without sacrificing some of that sparkly little, little top end detail, um, that, that is so rewarding to pick out of music. So, uh, in the end, this is my pick. Um, the convenience is great. Like I said, they ship super quick. The, the price I think is very fair. Um, when you look at the other things in the space, um, this stuff, like I said, is subtle. And so if your system isn't terribly resolving, you know, if your your components are, are still sort of on the modest side, I don't know that this is really going to be a great place to invest. The nice thing is like, you know, at 30 bucks, 50 bucks, it's not, not huge dollars. Um, if your system is very resolving and you've spent a lot of money on your headphones and your amp and your DAC, then I think you kind of owe it to yourself to make sure the interconnects are uh, of, a, of a high enough quality where you can unlock that that value and get everything you've already paid for out of that um like i said all this stuff is pretty subtle but if you're listening on a really resolving system it is there and i don't want to go back like i've heard how the belden sound i don't want to go back to the other cables right and i think that's it's a very reasonable amount of money to get that value out am i interested now in hundred dollar cables or thousand dollar cables um not particularly i you know i i think a lot in this industry about the sort of law of diminishing returns curve right and I, I feel like this this is usually in that like three to five x the entry level point is kind of where it starts to top out you know you know it's not a hard and fast rule but i think you're going to see less and less um value as you creep up to multi hundred thousand dollar cables I'd, I'd love to try it someday maybe someone will loan me one and i can give it a try and have my mind blown and and be super frustrated i certainly like having heard um uh, very high-end cables uh, for this as far. I was like, oh crap, that does make a huge difference. Um, so you never know till you go. Anyway, that's it. Uh, Signcraft, sign out.